Hi, do you have a lot of pain? Do you abuse anti-inflammatories? Watch out, because anti-inflammatories increase your risk of heart problems, they can interfere with your blood pressure medication and attack your kidneys. Anti-inflammatories such as diclofenac, cataflam, comeback, ibuprofen, and naproxen lead the list of drugs that most damage the kidneys, mainly because many people use them, which can cause acute kidney failure and often require urgent hemodialysis. On the other hand, we know that inflammation in the body, such as obesity, increases your risk of a heart attack and stroke because inflammation is associated with atherosclerosis, cancer and dementia. Anything that persistently ignites your body in the long run has the power to harm your body. What to do to fight inflammation and joint pain, if it's better to avoid anti-inflammatories from the pharmacy? One of the best ways to reduce inflammation is not in your pharmacy but in your kitchen. I'm here in my kitchen and will teach you 10 natural anti-inflammatory foods you should have at home. These natural anti-inflammatories do not raise blood pressure and do not harm the kidneys or liver. On the contrary, some have the power to reduce hepatic steatosis and can help with your pain. But first, enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our health tips, and activate the bell to receive notifications. Also, spread this knowledge with your friends and family. We get useless stuff on WhatsApp, and when it comes to your health, our health is worth sharing. So share there. And tell me are you very inflamed? Do you have a lot of pain, tiredness, fatigue, poor digestion? What part of the United States or the world are you from? Could you write it down there? Let's go. You have a lot of pain, fatigue, indisposition. What are the 10 natural anti-inflammatory foods you should have in your home? I'm going to talk about the top 10, the 10th, I doubt you know, and you can plant it there, in your kitchen, and reap the benefits of it all year round. First Food Ground Saffron Here at home, we use ground saffron or turmeric often. Turmeric contains curcumin, a substance with powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. However, the bioavailability of curcumin is low, so it needs to be enhanced with black pepper. Then, when you are seasoning the chicken, you can put black pepper with turmeric. What else can saffron of the earth do? Curcumin can increase brain levels of BDNF, an important neurotrophic factor that increases the growth of new neurons and can help fight various degenerative processes in your brain, such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. And many studies with curcumin are trying to identify whether or not it protects against cancer. So far, it is impossible to beat the hammer on the matter. But if you have joint pain, arthritis and osteoarthritis, patients respond well to curcumin supplements, so much so that turmeric-based remedies are available over the counter. But I recommend using saffron as a seasoning in food. Second food garlic. I knew that garlic, since ancient times, was used as a medicine due to its medicinal properties. The Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Babylonians and Chinese used them to treat various diseases. Garlic contains allicin, found most in fresh garlic, right after mincing or crushing. And garlic is easy to include in your diet. You can season rice, beans, meats, chicken. Everything is good with garlic. Garlic can help protect against the common cold, it can lower blood pressure, and its antioxidants can also help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. And it can also improve your physical performance. Olympic athletes in ancient Greece already used garlic for this. Third food. Cloves Some studies have found that compounds in cloves can have several health benefits, including improving your liver health and stabilizing your blood sugar levels. Clove also contains a compound called eugenol, which, as an antioxidant, can be up to 5x more potent than vitamin E. Eugenol has also been shown to have anti-cancer properties in mice. Unfortunately, research on the protective effects of eugenol in humans is limited. But don't abuse it, in large amounts, eugenol can be toxic. So here's what I always say, moderation. Fourth Ginger. Ginger is a relative of turmeric. It contains gingerol, which has powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. In addition, a 2019 study concluded that ginger supplementation can increase weight in overweight or obese people as it can also increase metabolism. And ginger can help control blood sugar, lower blood pressure, and treat indigestion. Some animal studies suggest that the antioxidants in ginger can inhibit inflammation that occurs in the brains. Fifth Food Olive Oil I always hit that key. Olive oil is rich in monounsaturated fats. It is the healthiest oil of all. It also has high amounts of antioxidants, especially a polyphenol called oleocanthal, 
which has strong anti-inflammatory properties and has been shown to work similarly to ibuprofen, an anti-inflammatory drug. In addition, olive oil has antibacterial properties, it has even been studied to help eradicate H. pylori in the stomach, it can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, and it increases insulin sensitivity. Some studies show that olive oil can reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. So, it's worth investing in olive oil. Sixth food tomato. Tomatoes are rich in potassium, which helps to lower blood pressure. It also contains a compound called lycopene, hence its red color. And if you cook the tomato, it increases the bioavailability of lycopene. Lycopene reduces the risk of cardiovascular diseases and helps with prostate health. Makes your skin healthier and can protect your eyes against macular degeneration, as in addition to lycopene, it is rich in lutein and beta-carotene. Now, there's a catch. Tomatoes have high levels of pesticides. So if you can, tomato, buy organic. Seventh food fruits All fruits are high in antioxidants. If you like a specific fruit, you can keep it in your diet that is doing you good. But I will separate two types of fruit that should be in your diet. Red berries like strawberry, blackberry, and raspberry These fruits are rich in anthocyanin, a natural anti-inflammatory. The MIND diet is recommended to prevent dementia, recommends them in the diet. The other fruit is the avocado. Avocado is rich in antioxidants like vitamin E, which has anti-inflammatory properties. Plus, it's rich in healthy fats and can prevent metabolic syndrome and help you control your blood sugar level. It can be like an avocado smoothie, but since I mentioned the tomato, try making guacamole, which has avocado, tomato, lemon, and onion and is very tasty. Eighth food chestnuts I know things are expensive. And chestnut was always expensive. But chestnut is not to be exaggerated. Eating two or three a day is already good. Why not overdo it? Because chestnuts are caloric, they make you fat. What do chestnuts, walnuts, and almonds do? It can improve blood cholesterol as they have good fats, monounsaturated fat. In addition, they are rich in vitamins. One study found that walnuts have a more remarkable ability to fight free radicals than fish, and nuts are beneficial against type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome as they are high in fiber, which can help keep you full and slow absorption. Calories and improve intestinal health. Food chia Despite being small, chia seeds are highly nutritious. They are packed with fiber, protein, and omega-3s, which can increase good cholesterol and lower triglycerides and various micronutrients and antioxidants like chlorogenic acid, which can help lower blood pressure and caffeic acid and quercetin, which have anti-inflammatory effects. In addition, chia seeds are rich in several nutrients essential for bone health, such as calcium, phosphorus and magnesium. 10th. Green leafy vegetables such as broccoli, spinach, kale, and asparagus are high in fiber and antioxidants. Numerous studies cite the high intake of leaves and vegetables with a reduced risk of certain types of cancer, such as bowel cancer. And now you come here and ask me? Leaves, greens, of course, I knew, what's new? This right here broccoli sprouts. I doubt you knew this. You don't have to sell them in supermarkets, you must make them home. I read it in Anthony Robbins' book Life Force and started reading everything about it, and I'm planting it here at home. It looks like alfalfa sprouts, but it's not. It's much hotter, it tastes like mustard. These here are four days old. What is this interesting about health? Broccoli sprouts have the highest level of sulforaphane of any vegetable. Sulforaphane is the compound that gives broccoli superfood properties. Broccoli sprouts can contain over 200x the sulforaphane as broccoli. And what are the possible benefits of sulforaphane? It may have anti-cancer properties increases apoptosis as anti-angiogenic. In addition to being anti-inflammatory, it may protect against some conditions such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and improve gut health. Of course, even though it's a superfood, it's best not to overdo it. I bought this seed and have been planting it for a few months and mixing it into salads. This brand is imported, but it has broccoli seeds in the United States. I also bought them from the United States, and they worked very well. It's cheap, and it's simple to grow. It takes a day to soak, as these are here. Then I drain and water it 3x a day until the fifth day when it will be good to eat. Interesting, if you can, it's worth it. I had to choose here the 10 foods that have significant anti-inflammatory power, but we have others. Coffee, for example, is rich in polyphenols and other anti-inflammatory compounds. It can also protect against inflammation and reduce liver another exciting drink. I drink green tea almost every day, 
For years, it has epicatechin and EGCG, which, in low doses, can reduce inflammation. But I could also talk about oats or flaxseed, both highly healthy. If you're looking for an eating plan, follow the Mediterranean diet, which is rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, fish, and olive oil. Another important thing. It's not just eating right, having these foods in your house and using them regularly. It would help if you also avoided some things that cause inflammation. Like a sedentary lifestyle you have to stay active and do physical exercises because a sedentary lifestyle ignites. You must lose weight if you are overweight because fat, especially abdominal fat, increases inflammation. You have to reduce stress. And avoid certain foods when eating. What are they? Ultra-processed foods, which are full of preservatives too. Extend shelf life, flavorings, artificial colors. These are a bomb for inflammation. Trans fats avoid foods with hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated fat found in margarine, ice cream, snack foods pro, cess desserts and fast food. Avoid processed meat sausage, bacon, ham, salami, smoked meat, ham, pâtés which, despite being delicious, are bad for you. We must also cut down on refined carbohydrates, from white bread, pasta, pizza, and white rice. And, of course, cut down on sugar and corn syrups, sodas, juice boxes, industrialized salad dressing, condiments such as ketchup or mustard, canned fruits, jellies, cakes, and industrialized puddings. A diet as natural as possible and less processed can have noticeable effects on your physical and mental health, improving your mood and overall quality of life. We must do our part. Eating more foods that protect us from inflammation and reducing the things that inflame us as much as possible. To have a life full of vigor and physical, mental and emotional well-being. Did you like the video? Remember to share so more people have this knowledge. My name is Andre Wambier, a cardiologist. Remember to sign up. Thank you very much.